we talked about it last week when we had DJ Hard hit a, on the program and bootlegging came up. Um, I, I can understand bootlegging and, you know, 2000 and above because I was kind of part of that with the Napster and the, the this and the that, uh, the, the fake CDs. But explain the process scene uh, of bootlegging back, you know, when you were coming up. And also that led into a situation with the whole flaming compilation and you getting hit up by some bloods, correct? Or is that two uh, separate so, stories? Um, the bootleg thing came in uh, unknown and found some records at this record store up in Hollywood that mixed up all these records together out of New York. And uh, for the most part, they was good, but then at some point in time, they started doing rec music that wasn't, that wasn't appealing to the clientele of, of Eva to Dark about halfway through. Because a record has about a record, the one side of a, one side of a 12 inch is 22 minutes, whether it's an album or a 12 inch. Okay. And they would take these records and blend them all together. And about halfway through, the music would fall off. And we figured, man, this would be great if we could do this in LA and use our music. So we, we, we traced down a, a record manufacturing plant in El Segundo and um, went to a studio and blended up a bunch of records, pressed them up, and they were selling. Okay. And when you say records, you're talking about like hot songs at the time, like a mixtape type thing? Yeah, like a mixtape okay. thing. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay. You know, I still got all the plates and all the... I'm going sh to show you guys Damn. how oh, deep... Oh, please. Down. I'm going to show you, I'm going to take you out on a tour of my garage and under my house one day, folks. I'm going to break my camera out and take you guys under the studio to show you all the stuff. The people think I'm lying. When you see Cut Up, House Party, V-Rock, all those, all those Alonzo's uh, labels, okay? I still got labels and plates for all that stuff. Anyway, mm. um, because I had the connection with the distribution from the record store, I started selling records. I called my people up, hey man, I got records. A lot of these people I'd never seen before, but they knew my voice. So they would buy from me. So I come by, meet people for the first time. I'm, I'm just talking to you on the phone for about a year, but you never met me before, a lot of you guys. And when I started telling them what I had, and they never heard anything like that before, it blew up. So late, shortly after that, we had some success. I went and bought a, um, bought a four track mixer and some more turntables. And we just got busy, and me and Unknown was actually competing for for music to play on our, uh, our Z Rocks. Dre was yeah. mixing for them, Yellow was mixing for me, and then later on, I, Yellow Dre came mixed for me also, and then later on, Mike T came mixed for me. Um, and it, it, it just became a serious underground market, and it got to the point at one point in time, man, it almost got um, real, real. Um, Ill, super Ill, it was illegal enough at one point, mm -hmm. but a lot of guys start just taking somebody's record, taking a hot record, and putting it on the needle, put it, put a needle on the record, let it play, and just copy the record, okay, and put their label on it. That ain't gonna fly. That ain't gonna fly. So when they start doing that, I back, I got out of the game, okay, because the, not 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 y'all just. It's one thing to bite a piece of this, piece of that, piece of this. Mm -hmm. You might have had 30, 40 seconds of a record in, in, in the mix. Maybe, maybe, maybe gotcha. a minute. Okay. Gotcha. But these guys are taking the whole record and just playing the whole record. No nothing. Just playing the whole record. No mixing, no nothing. And I figured told them at a time for somebody bitch to bitch. And uh, I didn't want to be nowhere around. So when they sold out of my last um Z Rocks, I was I was it was a wrap for me. Damn. Was uh, buying bootleg, you know, um, eight tracks, bootleg records, was that a thing? I know it was an underground thing, but, you know, was it as easy as it is today? Like, how did one go about even finding one of your your, your records? If you lived, would a swap meet sell them, or would you sell them? If you lived in, if you lived in uh, Los Angeles County, you could get my records. I understand. My last, one of my last jobs was working for a distribution company. California, Nevada, uh, Washington State, and Arizona was all my territories. So I knew people in different areas. So once they got wind of what I was doing, they'd call me up and I'd box them up and ship them for the UPS. I'd go to UPS with a box of records and, and then uh, oh, I'd go to UPS with a truck of records. And a um, couple of days later, I was getting checks in the mail. Wow. When they touched down, they would send me a check in the mail. Then I had my boy Cletus, Methamine Cletus got so tight, 
Because he just knew a bunch of people I didn't know. He knew cats in, in t- Tennessee and Mississippi. And that was some hot shit back then. So mm. I'm going to see this store. I'm dropping off two or 3000 He gave me a stack of money about this big. On mm. a Friday, I'm happy as hell. Mm. Steve Yano come by now. I used to have get special orders just for Cletus and Steve Yano. Not to Rodeo, mention other right? stores I had. Just those two would buy. Between, it was, I had three people I worked with. Cletus, Steve Yano, and JDC. JDC is the only one still in business. Mm. And that's, that's what I did during the week before the club opened up. Oh, we would make mixes. And then, then we started doing the... Uh, Start doing the K Day mixes, and then the K Day mixes. I take those; those are fifteen minutes. I take them. We, they did them every day. I take them, throw them on the back of a record, and double sign. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hey man, I love this. Hey. Damn! Wow, when, when, that's when, when so you've been blessed with the hustle, you've been blessed with the gene, you figure out ways to make things happen. Yeah, yeah, and, this, and ladies and gentlemen, this is in 2015. This is 1980, whatever. Like, this is it, it probably wasn't easy to do this. Damn, dog. Wow. It was very expensive. It was very expensive. It was a lot more expensive than it is right now. I mean, mm. it, it's funny because I was thinking the other day, I said, you know, I've made more records in the 80s than I did. I haven't, I mean, I got the studio, <clears throat> and it takes nothing to make a record. I just haven't made one. Mm. I mean, I made my book, but I, I bought Ableton. I got an engineer looking at me right now. And to, to make music would not be that difficult for me because I got my own studio. And the process is so, so much easier and cheap as hell. But I just, mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm. I may have to do something just for the hell of it. I would love to hear that. And I would love to help out with that. I'm a clown. <laughs> you know, see, my problem is, I, I got a sense of humor, and I, I like making humorous shit. I ain't gonna kill mm-hmm. nobody. I'm gonna talk about nobody's mama. I, you know, I, I'm a humorous type of cat when when I do my music, and uh, either I'm gonna get laid or I'm gonna have some fun. Okay, that's mm-hmm. what I, that's 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 my that's or, or, I'm, gonna, or I'm gonna drop some game on your ass. One or two. That's that's mm-hmm. those are my those are my personal things. So if I do something, that's what you're gonna get. Either you're gonna have a good time, you're gonna get a good lesson. Are you going to get some good meat? 